Spent a lot of time talking about Shohei Otani, L.A. Times sports writer covering the Dodgers, uh, Mike D. Giovanna, joining us on the program. Mike was at the press conference yesterday. How would you summarize what you saw, what you heard yesterday? Yeah, it was really interesting. Honestly, I was surprised that Shohei said as much as he did. You know, so often in these situations, we get the, oh, there's an ongoing investigation. I can't comment on it. We're going to let the authorities handle it, and then we'll talk afterward. And he came right out on the offensive. You know, he was very assertive, very forceful in his denial of any speculation that he has been on sports, that he's been on baseball. And he really turned the tables on his now former interpreter and former confidant and friend, uh, basically accused Ipe of uh, being a liar and a thief. So uh, it was uh, it was very interesting. The tone of the room was very interesting, a little different than a lot of the Shohei Watani press conferences we're used to. But uh, he went on the attack, and it was very clear. What wasn't answered yesterday? To me, the two biggest questions, well, the biggest one is kind of obvious. It's like how... If indeed Ipe Mitsuhara siphoned off millions of dollars, you know, from Shohei's accounts, how did this happen without, you know, his, the people who handle his finances and Shohei himself without knowing that? And to me, the other uh, issue is, you know, how Shohei was so much more than an interpreter. I'm, I'm sorry, Ipe was so much more uh, than an interpreter for Shohei. He was around him almost every day of the year all day you know and uh how does a guy supposedly have such a gambling problem that he's racked up millions of debt uh, in debt without anybody knowing and uh you know even if shohei emerges from this scandal unscathed his reputation in the game intact i think you know he's gonna have to take a closer look at the people in his inner circle the people handling his affairs because they put a lot of trust in Ipe to do a lot. He was a liaison between, you know, the Dodgers, the Angels all those years, and Shohei between his agents at CAA and Shohei, between the media and Shohei. And to entrust that much in one guy and to have him betray you like he supposedly did is pretty disturbing. If you could ask one question, if it's to Shohei or uh, Ipe. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, all the questions I just mentioned, you know, to Ipe, uh, you know, how, how, why did you do this? You know, how, why did you think you're going to get away with this? And, you know, what was he thinking? You know, I mean, this guy was attached. I mean, I hate to use the term, but, you know, kind of a bit of a gravy train, you know, for the, for the next 10 years. This guy's, I'm sure Shohei made a lot more in tips and just, you know, just from being around Shohei, uh, Ipe, I'm sorry, I keep mixing these two up. Uh, then he did in salary and, you know, he's got, you know, a front row seat to one of the most amazing stories in the game. And to think you would just throw that all away is stunning. Uh, and, and to show, Hey, you know, how did, how did this happen? You know, under your watch, how did this happen right under your nose? And, you know, you, you could tell in the press conference, he felt very betrayed. And, uh, you know, there was a, there was a tone in his voice. I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know Shohei that well, but I've been in in dozens of interviews with this guy over the last six and a half years. And uh, I felt like, you know, he's usually very composed, very measured in his comments. And I felt a forcefulness and an assertiveness yesterday in his voice that was maybe like one octave below anger that we don't normally hear from Shohei. And I think that's why he sounded at least uh, to his teammates and Dodgers and I think if you saw the press conference, he sounded pretty convincing. I was curious about this. I don't know if anybody brought this up to Shohei, but here's the interpreter who has lied about working for the Red Sox and the Yankees. Like, Shohei has to know that this guy has said that he worked for the Yankees and the Red Sox, but he knows that he didn't work for the Yankees and the Red Sox. Like, there's certain things that you would, I would think would be normal. Like, wait, you didn't work for the Yankees, or, or why are you saying that? And then... You're going to trust him being basically your valet. I mean, it, I don't know. I, it, it just kind of stood out. It was just weird. Yeah, it goes to the vetting process, you know. Yeah. I mean, the Dodgers don't have a great track record, uh, let's face it, you know, with Trevor Bauer over the last few years. And I'm not saying, you know, they – I mean, they did background checks on on eBay. 
uh, they talked to him after the signing and you know, they met with him. Uh, and, you know, from what I've heard, the, the agent really vouched for EPA and, uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a vetting process that obviously didn't take place here. Uh, I mean, some of these things are in the really short bio that's been in the angels media guide for several years. And it's, you know, it, it's hard to pin the blame on, you know, the angels PR department for not, you know, doing background checks on, but. Yeah, it's very odd. You know, why would you lie about going to UC Riverside? You know, I know. I, you know, I went to Harvard. I went to Yale. I graduated Magna Cum Laude. You know, but but it is a smaller lie, though, Mike. Yeah, yeah, and and the whole the whole the bigger issue is like when you're lining up stories. When Ipe, you know, changed his original story that he told the ESPN 180 degrees to the next day, and then you layer on top of that these little fibs. Uh, his credibility is shot, you know, and I don't know. It's hard to know what to believe out of this guy. Um, what's next for the LA Times on this story? <laughs> we can't tell you oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, I just thought I, I would we're, ask. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're digging as hard as we can. We're trying to fill in some of the gaps uh, on Ipe's resume, uh, you know, trying to, you know, keep a, have a beat on the, uh, there's three different investigations, you know, and the MLB. Is, the is Ipe still in the States? I don't know for sure. We, you know, we have had reporters at his parents' house. We were told in no uncertain terms to go away. Uh, I've asked many of the Japanese reporters and they have not, he has not been seen in the States uh, he's going to have to emerge at some point because there's some uh, federal investigators that are probably going to have a lot of questions for him. And, you know, he's in a bit, of, he's in a heap of trouble. Let's, let's face it. Uh, if these allegations against him are true, you know, he could be looking at jail time. Maybe not. You know, a lot of, a lot of these situations are, they're going after the bookies, uh, not so much the, the betters, but 